Good morning, and today I want to share with you a little bit about how to go about evaluating keels and backs on your birds. And this is very, very important, no matter whether they're birds for laying or birds for meat production, it's all very important. Uh, even though today's presentation is going to focus mostly on meat birds, the same things, same trends, same practices will apply for your egg laying breeds as well. So let's take a look at it. Evaluating keels and birds is basically how to use your hands to do that. So let's take a look at this first slide here and this shows the skeleton superimposed inside of the outline of a, well, this is a female legger, but you can see how that the feathers can deceive what the body actually looks like to your eye. And this is why it's important to learn how to properly use your hands. One of the things we want to evaluate first is how long is the keel bone. The longer the keel bone, the more breast muscle a bird you're gonna have. And also the more body capacity they're going to have. So we want to measure from the front tip to the rearward tip. How do we do that? Well, first off, let's talk about how you hold a chicken. And trust me, I looked and looked and looked before I could find this photo of how to properly hold a chicken. This is the only photo that I found where the person is actually holding the chicken properly. They're cradling the bird's breast and abdomen in their left hand, and they're using their right hand to help hold the bird as well. Now this is a youngster, so they have kind of small hands. You know, when you handle a bird and you, you hold them and they, they tend to flop around a lot, that's well, usually because they're afraid of falling. And when you hold a bird like this in one hand supporting the body, they're not afraid of falling. Good thing to remember. Now, what I do is I put the bird's legs between my pointer finger and middle finger and my middle finger and my next finger. And this allows for me to feel the length of keel bone. Now, I put the front of the keel bone, illustrated by the uh, blue arrow and red arrow here, right up against the heel of my hand. And then I run the keel bone along the length of my middle finger to the rearward tip. This gives me a good idea of whether that bird has a short keel bone, a medium length keel bone, or a long keel bone. Real easy to do when you're holding them in your hands and it, pretty soon it becomes second nature to you if you practice it enough. I can also use my thumb and my little finger to help hold the bird's wings against the body if she still wants to flop around a little bit. But then I also use my thumb and my pointer finger and my two outer fingers here to gently squeeze or apply gentle pressure inward to evaluate the amount of fleshing on the breast. And the amount of fleshing is really important if you're going to have good meat producing birds. If we look at this chart here, it starts off with the top bird and it gives you a cross-section view of what an emaciated bird's breast would look like in cross-section here. Under conditioned is right below that, number two. Number three is a well-conditioned bird. They have a good amount of, of uh, muscle fleshing on the keel and on the breastbone. This is what you want. Now, number four and number five, we get into overly conditioned and obese birds. I'm pretty much okay with the number four bird, but number five birds, when they start getting overly obese and fat, that's costing you a lot of money to feed and produce that. So evaluate your birds very carefully. Now, evaluating broiler breeders, bear one thing in mind when you were looking at these series of photos here, these are commercial broilers. These are not heritage birds but the illustrations still point out a few things. Number one has a shallow breast with poor depth of muscle, and number two has a good depth of breast and better muscling. Which bird would you prefer to cook for your family? If we look at the plucked birds, and you can really see it starting to show up here, the narrow-breasted bird has poor width of muscling, that's number one, and number two, you've got a wider-bodied bird, better muscling. Also notice not only the width of the breast, but look at the width between the legs. And I'm going to close out with some more information on how you can really give a good visual check on width of legs. Now, evaluating the meat quantity, good keel length translates into good breast length. 
Look at number one, that bird has a short keel. Bird number two has a longer keel. You can really begin to see the difference in the impact that the keel has on the length and amount of muscling. Now these are gonna be some generalizations here because remember this is for uh, commercial birds and, and not for heritage birds, but length of keel should be equal to or greater than the width across the bird's shoulders. Spring of ribs, that's the width across the back between the hips and the wing. It should be about as wide as the width across the shoulders. And width across the hips, width across the hips should exceed the width across the shoulders. And broiler breeders, uh, body conformation in general, the shape and size of the body is relative to each other, the different parts. You want to evaluate the following things by measuring, and here again, just a simple measurement with your hands. You wanna know the width across the shoulders, the length of back, the depth of body, the length of the keel. We've already talked about that. The spring of the ribs and the width across the hips. And like it says here, and like I'm saying, you can do this easily by using your hands. How do we measure the, the width of body and spring of ribs and the width of the hips? Just form a simple view with your thumb and your pointer finger. Lay it across the bird's back. Now I start measuring right up behind the wings to determine the width. And then I slowly move my hands back. I measured the, the spread of the, or spring of the ribs and also the width at the hip joint here called the isthmus. To measure the depth of keel, I use the same hand formation, thumb on top of the back and my pointer finger or middle finger down measuring how far it is to the bottom of the keel bone. The more distance you have, the better the bird is. To measure the length of back, I start up right at the base of the neck and I use my hand to do this. I know that the width of my hand across my knuckles is roughly four inches. I wanna know how many widths of my hands go from the base of the neck to the base of the tailbone. That gives me the length of the back. Now, here's a couple of visual cues that you can use. Have you ever paid attention to the width of your bird's head? You can see this even on baby chicks, and this is a really good illustration. The chick on the right has a much wider, blockier looking head, and you can see it forms a much wider open V. Now these chicks are a little bit different in age, but it still illustrates the point. The chick on the right, you don't see any eyeball. That's a good wide head. Uh, an adage that I try to teach people is, as go the head width, goes the body width. Just a good rule of thumb there. Now here's another cue that you can use. If you see your birds walking away from you, look at the distance between the legs. Obviously the bird on the left is a much narrower bodied bird than the bird on the right. So there's more distance between the legs. I like to be able to fit my fist between uh, the legs. Another cue is see how clamped looking or pinched almost the tail looks on the bird on the left compared to the bird on the right. Much wider bird. Really obvious looking at a live bird when they're walking away from you. Now, I wanna encourage you to develop and use a scoring system. It can be good, better, best. I like to use a numerical system, one, two, three, or one through five, whatever you decide to use, whatever works for you, use it consistently. Track all these scores for each individual bird. Add up the numerical scores and the highest scores are your better birds. Pretty easy, isn't it? I hope you have enjoyed our presentation today and I hope you get out there and start practicing these hand measurements with your birds. And remember what I talked about in our encouragement, the more knowledge that you consistently apply becomes a habit. You will find yourself using your hands to evaluate your birds every time you handle them. And this is really what you should be doing. So until next time, hope you have a great day and your family does well and your birds do well as well. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.